Hello everyone and welcome to another X-Plane 11 tutorial. In the previous video I showed you how to use the flight management computer and we saved the route from Ottawa to Montreal. In this video we'll fly that route using the default 737 and I'll show you how to use the autopilot. There are several bugs with the default 737 that will become apparent as we progress through this video. But for now, you have to learn how it's done the original way before you move on to some of the other planes such as on my left, the X737 version of this, or on the right, the Zibo version of this plane. I'll have other videos on these two planes in the future, and I'll talk about some of the features of them as we progress. For now, we'll select the default 737, Ottawa McDonald Cartier International, and we'll put ourselves on gate 18. And we'll start our flight. Because I have attempted to make this video a couple times, I've rebloated the aircraft a few times. So now the first bug of the default 737 is apparent. Notice how the auto throttle is already lit up like it's turned on, even though it's off. So if you reload the aircraft by going up here to the developer menu and selecting reload the aircraft, or you come up to the flight configuration menu and start it over again, and you already had the auto throttle enabled, you'll kind of get into this weird state. So if you turn it on and then turn it off, it resets itself back to the default. So the first thing I'll show you then is what the auto throttle does. By turning on the auto throttle, the flight management computer can tell the plane how fast it should go. So as we go through this flight today, when we go below 5,000 feet, the auto throttle will set to 220 knots. When we go from 5,000 to 10,000 feet, the auto throttle will be 250 knots. And when we go above 10,000 feet to our 13,000 feet cruise, it'll be at 290 knots. So again, the auto throttle lets you control the speed. If you're not using the flight management computer, you can use this dial to set the speed. So in this case, 250. And then by selecting the speed button, it'll keep the plane at that 250. But in the case of today's video, we'll be using the flight management computer to control the speed. The flight director, when enabled, will set up a magenta cross on your screen. This lets you fly the plane manually to the waypoints that you're intending to go to in your flight management computer. Turning on your autopilot will then have the plane automatically fly it for you, but if you want to fly it manually, the flight director is where it's at. The next thing I'm going to make sure is set is the course and heading at 250 because we'll be taking off from runway 25. And our cruising altitude today will be 13,000, which I pre-dialed in. One of the features that's not in the default aircraft, but it's in the X737 and the Zibo mod, is you can simply click inside the altitude box and type in the altitude instead of having to hold in the knob left or right. We'll now move on to the flight management computer. We'll select the route menu. We'll select the pilot route list. And you should already have the route saved from the previous video. If you don't, I suggest watching the first video on the flight management computer before moving on to this video of the autopilot. So we'll select this button here to load the flight plan. And we'll select clear to remove the route loaded message. You can click legs and verify everything looks good. I don't see any vectors. I don't see any discontinuities, so things are great. We'll now move on to the cruise, and we'll set the cruise altitude to 13,000, because by default it's not set. We'll go to climb. Again, by default, 225,000 is not set, so you would type in 220 slash 5,000 and set it here. So what this is doing is saying below 5,000 use the auto throttle to control the speed to 220 knots from 5,000 to 10,000 the speed should be 250 knots and above 10,000 the speed should be 290 knots. And that's all we need to do. So we'll go ahead and press shift G on the keyboard which will open up the ground handling screen and B to disengage the brakes. Because the runway is on the right, I'm going to have to push back to the left. If you need to go to the runway on the left, you'll need to push back to the right. Okay, push cart on the way. 
So we'll close the ground handling window and we'll keep the flight management computer up because it'll be useful for us on today's flight. Here we go. Okay, safe travels. All right, so if you watch my mouse over here, you can see the idle speed is around 30. I'm gonna bump that up to about 35. That will give me a safe speed to taxi. The other thing I'm gonna recommend is that because this is a large aircraft and it does go fast, you're going to want to have a button set up for your auto braking. Or speed braking so if you look over here this lever here is the speed brake so if I look outside the aircraft and zoom in and I turn the speed brake on notice the flaps go up that will help me brake quite a bit so if you don't have a joystick button or a lever for the speed brake I highly recommend setting that up before you go ahead and take off Another tip I'll give you is that if you look right now, you can see that the nose of my aircraft is not lined up with the taxi line. And if you want to be as real as you possibly can, you would want to try to line up your wheel of the nose with that yellow line. So there's a trick. These two lights, the fire warning and the master caution, if you try to keep this yellow line between those two buttons, it should line up pretty close so you can see it's not bad so that's a little tip that if you want to try to be as real as you can to stay lined up on that center line try to keep the yellow line between the fire warning and the master caution So because I'm turning, I will use throttle by putting it down a little bit. I'll also use the rudder pedals to brake on the right side so that I get a bit of a right turn with differential brakes.
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to lower our flaps to 5. Next thing we're going to do is this will help you actually um, pull up the plane a lot easier than um, if you didn't do the trim. So over here you see where it says take off and it's set to about 6. Depending on the weight of the aircraft and how many passengers and fuel you'll want to adjust this, I like to go to about 7 or 8. So you adjust this wheel to here and what that will do is instead of you really having to pull really hard on the yoke to get in the air, it almost kind of gets in the air automatically for you if you will. So again you'll have to kind of adjust this to your personal preference on what feels good to you but somewhere around six to eight is a good number for me. When we take off and the plane reaches a speed of about 140 knots that's when we'll pull back on the yoke. By the time we get to about 130 knots it'll already want to go in the air because of the trim level that we'll set. So what we'll do is again our flight director is on, our auto throttles on. I will fly the plane manually for now. Um, when we get in the air I'm going to engage the LNAV feature which is lateral navigation and that's basically going to take us to the waypoints. And then we'll turn on VNAV which is vertical navigation and we'll manage our altitude to get up to our 13,000 feet. And then finally we will click the CMD button to actually engage the autopilot to actually command the plane for those two features. So let's go ahead and take off. I try to push the throttle to about 90 or 9. And again using the fire warning and master caution as a reference try to line up the center line of the runway with those two buttons. Alright, we're almost at 140, we'll pull up. There we go. And we'll have manual control of the aircraft until we get to about a thousand feet altitude. Notice the flight director wants me to take a slightly smaller slope. Now that we're at a thousand, I will enable LNAV and hit command. So now the plane will automatically start turning. And now I'll enable VNAV. And you notice the level change light automatically came on. And now you can see the vertical speed has increased to about 2700 and I can let go of the yoke. The plane is now going to automatically fly itself to the magenta line, which is our first waypoint, and continue up in ascent until we get to 13,000 feet. You'll also notice that the speed is 220, because if we look at our cruising or our climb speed here, we said below 5,000 feet, it's 220. So as you can see here, once we reach the 5,000, that speed will jump to 250 here. There we go. So the speed is now 250. Once we get the 10,000, the speed will go to 290, and that'll be our cruising speed for the duration of today's flight. I like to look at the program screen of the flight management computer because it tells me the most important thing I need to know. That being what the waypoint I'm currently going to is, so in this case AVVON and I'm 26 nautical miles away. The next waypoint that I'm going to, which is 52 nautical miles away. The destination airport and the nautical miles away. And most importantly, the top of descent or T slash D. When I reach the top of descent in 62 nautical miles, or now 61, I have to start the descent from 13,000 feet down to, if we look at this plane here, 4,000 at Titus, because Titus says I have to be above 4,000 feet. Otherwise, I can go right down to 3,000 or something like that. But because there's a restriction here that says I can't go any lower than 4,000 feet, I have to be above it, 
4,000 would be the lowest I can go. So I have to know that in that distance of now 59 nautical miles, I have to lower this altitude down to that. And I'll, I'll get into that as we get closer. But as you can see now, we're now approaching our 13,000 feet. We're about 900 feet away from the speed going to 290. And we're intercepting the magenta line, which will put us on a direct path to the first waypoint here. So now we're above 10,000 feet, so now the speed jumps to 290. The runway that we'll be arriving at in Montreal is runway 24, so let's go ahead and set our, cor our heading to 20 240. And I forgot to raise the flaps and the landing gear, so technically I'm going way too fast and I probably would have broken off the, uh, the wings, but it is a tutorial on how to use the autopilot and not necessarily how to properly fly the default 737. So let's go ahead and raise our landing gear and raise our flaps. And we can see now as we approach our 13,000 feet that the engine is now starting to idle around 77 RPMs. We're hovering around 290, 300. So we're kind of just cruising at the right speed now. Another bug that I have experienced in using the default 737. Let's say that on your first attempt to follow along in this video, you're not successful. I hope that you are, but if you're not, I found it almost impossible to get the autopilot to behave correctly on the second attempt. In other words, I would do exactly the same thing that I did the first attempt, but it wouldn't automatically level off at the right altitude. It would go something crazy up to like 30,000 feet. Um, I just could not get it to behave correctly. So for weeks I thought it was me or I was doing something wrong or I was misunderstanding how the plane worked, but it always worked on my first attempt. So if you close X-Plane and go back in, if you make a mistake, rather than reloading your aircraft or going to the flight configuration screen and going back to Ottawa for a second attempt, I would close X-Plane first and then do it again. And this way you're guaranteeing that there's no quirks in the aircraft itself and you're getting a fresh clean start. All right, we're moving past ABBON to our new waypoint of HABBS. And we're about 26 nautical miles away. So I'm going to zoom here on the map for you, and I want you to see that the top of ascent is also indicated here on your screen. So see this little green circle here? This is the top of descent, so in 33 nautical miles. It's a green donut shape, so you can look at the map here. You can also look at the program button 
on the flight management computer, I prefer looking at the program button because I do find you have to zoom in quite a bit to see it on the screen. All right, so we're about 14 nautical miles away from our top of descent. Now the autopilot will do what the flight management computer says. However, you are ultimately the pilot and in control of the aircraft. So it's not gonna just automatically descend. It doesn't know if it's safe. It doesn't know if there is any air traffic regulations that say you can't descend now. So you have to trigger the descent. So. In order to do that, I have to make sure that I set that altitude down to the right level before I get to that top of descent. So let's go ahead. We know it takes a while uh, on this aircraft since you have to use the knob. And we'll go ahead and dial this down to 4000, which is the altitude that we have to be above just before we start our final descent or our final approach to the runway. Alright, so now we're at an altitude of 4,000 feet. So what I'm going to do is remove the altitude hold, like so. And now I'm telling the plane that when you hit the top of descent at 7 nautical miles from now, start descending automatically to the altitude of 4,000, all while maintaining the speed of 290, above 10,000 feet, 250 below 10,000 feet, and 220 below 5,000 feet. Another thing you'll notice that when I first started the tutorial, the IAS mock was lit up with a speed. When vertical navigation is enabled, 
it blanks this out to let you know that the flight management computer is controlling the speed. If I was to disable VNAV, then I could adjust the speed myself, which we'll do that later when we get close to the Montreal airport and we try to lower our speed to about 160, 170 not, um, knots. So there you go. We've now reached the top of descent. The altitude's 4,000. Automatically vertical speed was engaged and you can see the plane is automatically figuring out the right vertical speed so that we get to 4,000 by the waypoint that we need to be at. And you can see here in the screen, we're now going below 12,000 and we have a 1,250 negative vertical speed. If we look here at the legs of our flight now, you can see that we're now going to be taken care of all the way down to be around 4,000 feet by the time we get to Titus. So that is the most important tip. If you don't set that altitude below the altitude that you need to be at, and you don't turn off the alt hold, the vertical navigation will not work, you'll fly over the runway, and you'll never land. So step one, set your cruise altitude on this MCP when it's near the top of descent because it does take some time to turn the knob change that down to the lowest altitude that you're approved to remove the altitude hold and from that point forward the plane will automatically start manage its descent so if we look in front of us the montreal airport is right there we're going to be flying over and looping back to land on runway 24 left so let's go ahead and set up our ILS radio frequency. If you have a plugin called X Squawk Box, there's a neat little feature where you can press enter, two slashes, 110.50 is the current um, ILS frequency for the, uh, st for the active. And if I want the standby, I can go three backslashes, 110.50. And now, if I look at my radios, I have 110.50 and 110.50. The other thing that I like to do, because I like to hear the actual Morse code to make sure that I'm in range of the ILS frequency, I can select this button right here. So when I get close to the ILS frequency, I can hear the beep, beep, beep of the Morse code to let me know that, okay, I gotta start paying attention to my localizer and my glide slope. All right, based on our current rate of descent, we're definitely going to be above 4,000 at Titus. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the altitude actually a little lower to 3,000. This will make sure that we don't have to come in as steep 
when it comes to our glide slope for ILS landing on runway 24 left. You can see here at SLOKA we need to be at 3000 anyway, so I'm just pre-dialing that in. Once we get the 3000 we should be intercepting the glide slope and then I'll show you how to deal with the landing of this great 737. see here we'll be soon turning and going towards our runway and intercepting the glide slope. If you look here on the screen at the bottom where my mouse cursor is, this is where a diamond will appear when we've intercepted the localizer and on the right hand side here a diamond will appear when we intercepted the glide slope. As long as we're above the diamond, that means we're above, we're below the glide slope so we should have no problem intercepting it. And if the diamond is to the left, that means the runway is to the left. And if the diamond is to the right, the runway is to the right. So you'll see that as we start to turn and get closer to our airport. Alright, our first diamond has appeared, the localizer, so you can see here the diamond. So once we start lining up with the runway, our goal will be to keep this kind of diamond or triangle right in the middle here. And we can now hear the Morse code frequency of the localizer. And since the flight management computer has already told the plane everything it needs to to get down to 3,000 feet, you'll notice that the vertical navigation was automatically kick ticked off and now I see the speed. So now I want to make sure that we're coming in for a safe landing so when we get a little closer I'm going to adjust the speed, actually say down to 200 now to make sure that we're not going to come in too fast. And there we go. So. If we look now, I'm sorry, before we had a triangle, there's our diamond. So there's our localizer, which is our left and right of the runway. There's our glide slope. We can see we're well below it. So that when this localizer starts to come down to about here, sorry, when the glide slope starts to come down to about here, we're going to click a button called approach, and then the plane will land itself up to about 400 feet, and then we'll have to take it the last 400 feet. So let's go ahead and bring down the landing gear and set our flaps down to 5 again. Notice the glide slope is now coming down, so let's get ready to engage this button here called APP or Approach. Once it hits about the middle, I'll go ahead and do that. There we go. So now we're no longer flying with the flight management computer, so we can go ahead and get rid of this. We're now using the ILS radios inside the plane, uh, and the ILS radio will tell the plane to line up with the runway, left and right, and our descent is now automatically being managed by the localizer, or sorry, the glide slope here. So I have the course and heading at 240 because we're landing at runway 24 left. I have the speed set to 200. Flaps are down. 
landing gears down. I'm going to push forward on the rudder pedals to get ready with the brakes. And as we get closer to the runway, when we hit 400 feet, I will manually disengage the autopilot. I will take the throttle and cut it. And then I will engage the speed brake, which I showed you earlier. Because there's so many things to do all in a short period of time, that's why I highly recommend that those features all be binded to joystick buttons or levers if you have it. I use the Cytec, sorry, I use the CH Products yoke, uh, the Eclipse yoke, and I find that it has more than sufficient buttons and levers for me to bind all these things here. So I'm going to lower the speed a little more, say to 180. We we'll probably won't get there because we're too close, but every little bit helps. Again, this video, not so much about the how to land the 737 following all the rules, more about using the autopilot. I'll probably have many more videos on the proper startup procedures and how to properly fly this plane as I learn it myself, because I'm quite new to this big jet myself. So we're pretty close to disengaging the autopilot here. lower the flaps a little more all right we're now at 400 feet so I'm going to go ahead and disengage the autopilot cut the throttle try to cut off a little bit of speed for our landing. There we go. So you can see I've engaged the speed brake. All right. All in all, not a bad landing. I've only been playing with this jet now for about two weeks to understand the autopilot, so um, I'm sure I'll get to know it a lot better and do a much better job. I have to read some of the manuals to find out what the proper speeds and one and so on. I will create a couple other videos using the same flight plan in the future using the X737 plane and the Zibo mod because they have a lot of features as I mentioned such as being able to type in the altitude, um, the you can have it set to automatically turn on the speed brake for you. Um, some of the planes will even play the stewardess message telling your passengers that things in the cabin may have shifted and they should be careful. Um, they have checklists that you can follow to make sure that you're starting up the plane in the correct order. So there's all kinds of cool things that these other planes have that the default 737 does not. And it's why I recommend that. So I will follow up this flight with uh, some details about those planes in the future and several other videos of how to properly fly the 737. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you grasp the basic understanding of using the autopilot with the flight management computer. Um, please tell me any feedback that you have. If you've encountered bugs with vertical navigation, the autopilot kicking off, some of the weird quirks with the auto throttle that I've experienced, anything like that I'd like to hear your comments on. And I hope that you subscribe to my channel and give me some feedback of other videos that you'd like to see and maybe some of the tips that I'm doing good and some of the things that I'm not doing so good on. So thanks again for watching this video and I hope you come back and stay tuned for future videos. Have a great day.